The Faith at Work movement is on a cusp, destined for great things. God uses people from all kinds of walks of life and all kinds of professions to advance His kingdom. Work is a crucible that God uses to refine us. Everybody's work matters to God. The only thing that really brings lasting change is the gospel of Jesus Christ applied to every area of life. Leadership is people who can take other people's pain and turn it into passion. Are you overwhelmed by Jesus Christ? Well, welcome to Big D. And I feel so honored and privileged to get the time to talk with you about one of the great churchmen of all time, and that's Dr. Dick Halverson. Uh, it's amazing what God can use as bait. Bait to get a little kid into the influential sphere of a great churchman like Dick Halverson. How about Krispy Kreme donuts? I'll talk a little bit about that in just a minute. But Dick Halverson was a Midwesterner. He was born in Pentagree, North Dakota, wherever that is and went to college at Wheaton College. But it wasn't long before God stretched his influence from coast to coast, first taking him to Princeton Seminary to study for the ministry, and then all the way across to the left coast to First Presbyterian Church of Hollywood, where God teamed him up with the famous Henrietta Mears. Now, if you've never heard of Henrietta, she had a Sunday school class. Out of that class came Bill Bright, Earl Palmer, um, Roy Rogers, uh, Louis Evans, uh, and a bunch of other great men of faith. And Dick was a part of the influence on their lives as well. But it wasn't long before God took Dick back across the country in 1958, to be exact, to become the senior pastor of the Fourth Presbyterian Church of Bethesda, Maryland, where he was the pastor for 23 years. And under his leadership, I think it's fair to say, Fourth Pres became what you might call the cutting edge church in America. It certainly wasn't youth ministry with Chuck Miller, his uh, youth associate. And Dick began to get a great reputation as a great expositor of scripture. Now, I grew up in Bethesda, Maryland, but I didn't go to Fourth Pres. My family, we were members of the Presbyterian Church of the Atonement, which is a sister congregation to Fourth. Back then, families, particularly adults, were very loyal to their local congregations. So we didn't go to Fourth. My parents are going to stay at Atonement. But every Sunday night when I was in elementary school and on into junior high, they would drag, because I didn't want to go, they would drag my sister and me to the Sunday evening service at Fourth Presbyterian Church where Dick would hold forth. That's where he really exposited scripture verse by verse. I did not want to be there. That's where Krispy Kreme donuts come into play. That was the bait. My parents would say, we will stop at the Krispy Kreme store on Arlington Road and you can have all the donuts you want after church. So I bit on the bait and spent years, thank God I sat under the preaching of Dick Halverson. Now, to be honest with you, I really don't remember much about his preaching. What I do remember though, at Wheaton College, Dick had been in the Wheaton Glee Club. He was a good singer. So he would not pronounce the benediction on Sunday night. He would sing the benediction, same one every Sunday night. All the lights would go down in the sanctuary except a spotlight on the pulpit and Dick would sing, thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee from Isaiah 23 verses 3 and 4. But how does faith at work and Dick Halverson connect? You know, Dick, when he went to Washington, he immediately became uh, associated with the fellowship there in Capitol Hill. Dick really believed that God had strategically placed him uh, there in the D.C. area to make a difference. And he actually became the executive director of the fellowship in 1969. And he really began to help congressmen and senators and their staff realize that they weren't just elected to be a politician. They were elected, that, that was their calling, their ministry. Um, their work mattered to the Lord, their work there on Capitol Hill. 
And uh, Dick was, uh, uh, the fellowship also spawned the National Prayer Breakfast, which Dick was a key player in. And he certainly was a man of prayer. I remember him telling me a story one time. Uh, he said, Ron, I always carry a marble in my pocket to remind me of the world, the world that God so loved, and to pray for that world. He said, one day I went and visited a homebound woman in our congregation. And she was probably never going to get out of that bed again, and she knew it. And she was depressed, and she said to him, you know, Dick, I can't serve the Lord anymore. I'm just trapped in this room. And, and Dick pulled that marble out, and he said, ma'am, from that bed, you can impact any place on this globe. And that's true. And that just lifted her spirits did a paradigm shift for her. And Dick was one of the early pioneers, you know, in business as ministry, one of the cutting edge guys before that was a popular term. And I remember him telling me a story about an elder who came to him one time and said, Dick, session meeting next Monday night, that's the elders meeting, conflicts with the PTA meeting. Which should I go to? Dick said, you know, Ron, they never asked me that question twice. You're to be at that PTA meeting. He made a distinction between church work and the work of the church. He talked about that all the time. Church work are all those things that are necessary to make a local church go. Choir practice, committee meetings. But the work of the church is done as the congregation is dispersed throughout the week in homes, neighborhoods, offices, schools. And church work can get done without you. But the work of the church can never get done without you because God chooses to work through the dispersed salt and light of the church to really transform lives, to transform cultures and societies. Dick retired from Fourth Pres in 1981, but retirement for Dick was to impact the world in even greater ways because he became the chaplain to the Senate. Now, before Dick took on that role, the chaplain of the Senate basically showed up right before the Senate met, prayed, and then headed out of there. Dick's, Dick was permeated with relational theology. He was a people person, and he totally changed the job description of the Senate chaplain, which is the same as it is right now. He said, I've got to get into the lives of these senators and their staff and the custodians and kitchen workers and groundskeepers around the Senate office building. And so that's what he did. He counseled, you know, majority leaders. He counseled custodians and their families. He started Bible studies for em employees of the Senate. And there are countless stories of how people came to Christ uh, there on Capitol Hill. That maybe was Dick's greatest impact upon our nation. I'm a part of a national covenant group of Presbyterian pastors. We were all PCUSA. We're probably about a third PCUSA, EPC, and ECO. I pastor a church that just navigated its way out of the PCUSA into the evangelical covenant order of Presbyterians. But we have a bunch of folks in that group that grew up at Fourth Press. And I started about 12 years ago hearing them say the same thing over and over again. We'd talk about Dick Halverson. They'd say, again, I don't really remember much of his sermons, but that benediction, not the one he sang, but the benediction that he would pronounce in this, after the Sunday morning services, I just know so many people who say that has changed their lives. Now, I had heard that benediction. And so I thought I'd try to experiment at Highland Park Presbyterian Church here in Dallas. About 12 years ago, I started using Dick's benediction after every service. And I do in San Antonio now. Rarely does a week go by where I don't get an email, phone call, please send me that benediction or a story of how this benediction has turned somebody's life around. So I'm going to benedict you this morning. That just means God's good word. And I'm going to pronounce that benediction upon you. This is not mine. This is Dick Halverson's. You know, sometimes God anoints people. This is a case where God anoints words. I don't know what it is about the combination of these words, but they're life transforming. And so go in peace and bless the world.
And remember, you go nowhere by accident. Where you're going, God is sending you. And where you are, He has placed you. God has a purpose for your life right where you are. Christ Jesus, who indwells you, has something that He wants to do in and through your life right where you are. Believe this and go in His grace and in His love and in His power. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And thank God for men and women like Dick Halverson. God bless you all.